936. If you seem busy, you must be productive, but that's not always the case. A notebook shares life hacks for how to work better, not busier. It's called Slow Productivity, the Lost Art of Accomplishment Without Burnout. Author Cal Newport is a professor at Georgetown University and the host of the popular Deep Questions podcast. And Cal joins us now. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. Of course. Good morning. So is this, uh, is this all about this, uh, you know, working smarter instead of working? What was that saying? Uh, smarter, not harder? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm so good at working that I don't even know what the saying is, Cal. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I mean, really what this is, is changing our definition of productivity. Uh, we tend to think that productivity means busyness. And what I'm arguing is actually busyness doesn't produce in the end the results that matter. We need a slower, smarter understanding of what it means to get things done. But why do people then seem predisposed to looking busy, which also takes a lot of effort as opposed to doing what's effective and may benefit your career more? Well, I think uh, knowledge work in general is dominated right now by this idea I call pseudo productivity that uses visible activity as a proxy for useful effort. So this is the culture mm -hmm. in a lot of office jobs in particular. And so if visible activity is how you're going to be measured, well, you are going to be active. And the easiest way to be visibly active is to be sending those emails, doing that chat. So we have to change this culture. Right. I mean, I think of that famous uh, scene in Seinfeld where George Costanza would just look angry every time someone came out just to make himself look busy. But a lot of people are just trying to get through the workday. Maybe they don't care how productive they are. They just want to get through the workday. Well, the problem with using activity as our measure of productivity is that follows us everywhere. So now I have a laptop, I have a smartphone, it's in the evening, it's in the morning, mm. it's on the weekends, and I have to start asking myself, hey, if I answered an email right now, that might make me look productive. If I jumped in on a Slack conversation during my kid's soccer game, that might make me look productive. So as long as activity is our proxy for being productive, we have to constantly wage this internal battle between doing a little bit more busyness or doing something else that might matter. So doesn't this start at the top? Why are some businesses now saying, yeah, you might have been effective working from home, but I want you in this room with us. Does that make sense? Well, this is, I mean, it makes sense if pseudo productivity is what rules your company. If seeing activity is what you're going to say productivity is, then of course you want people back because you want to see them. But if we replace this with a smarter, slower definition of productivity that's based on what you produce over time, not what you're doing in the moment, we're going to gain a lot more flexibility and breathing room back into knowledge work. It sounds like a lot of the control is in the hands of the boss, though, if, they're, if they want productivity rather than busyness. I mean, what does the average person do if they're, you know, at the mercy of their boss? Well, one thing that can really help is to start to be more transparent about your workload. I mean, to actually show your boss, okay, here's the 10 things you've asked me to do. And here's the 10 things I'm working on. Uh, but I'm going to designate these first two in this list as the things I'm actively working on right now. And as soon as I finish one of these, I'll pull in one of the things that's waiting to be done. By being more transparent about how you're managing your work, you can actually reduce some of the overhead and freneticism of doing too many things at once. And one of the things we haven't talked about yet is that, that maybe it requires, uh, I think, as you say, uh, an obsession over quality where now people just might feel good enough is good enough. Yeah, well, the better you get at what you do, the more leverage you get about how you do it. So having this mindset of, I want to identify what in my job is the most important thing I do, and I want to get better at that. I want to practice that. That's critical because as you get better, people give you more leeway. Like, hey, this person produces. So the fact that their habits for how they organize their works a little, little more idiosyncratic, that's okay because they produce stuff that's valuable. Well, the book is called Slow Productivity, The Lost Art of Accomplishment Without Burnout. You can get more at Cal's websites. Follow him on social media. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.